say okay the engine's going I don't know 3,000 right. rpms and that makes total sense and then the drive shaft's going this many rpms it must be this gear ratio yeah and then it'll yeah, it'll actually true. put first second third it's just not going to actually um know the gear ratio instant. until the vehicle like moves it's not an yeah. instantaneous yeah. reading yeah. Sure, but. So what we were doing just a little bit ago was basically um, like some light drivability, making sure that I had like a, a general idea of what shape the fuel map had to be and how close it was for the areas where you're gonna, you know, kind of be driving around, cruising up a hill, that kind of stuff. Um, and it gave me a pretty decent idea of what shape this should be as like kind of a rough draft. Um, and it's safe enough for us to maybe do like a light pull on it now, but. Um, this is the main fuel table and it's in milliseconds is the way that I'm viewing it right now. That's the amount of time the injector is staying open for. Now the shape of this map should roughly represent the torque curve of your engine. So the peak of your uh, fuel map is going to be roughly where the engine makes peak torque. Um, and then uh, like we can change the units here to different things like duty cycle and F6. Uh, duty cycle and pounds per hour uh, to be able to look at uh, in a different view, but if you look at it in pounds per hour, for example, yep. this looks like a horsepower curve. That's because it's fuel flow over time, yep. so it's going to kind of roughly represent like a, a horsepower curve. Um, and then when you look at it in milliseconds, your engine's going to consume the most fuel per revolution, if you want to call it that, at peak torque. So that's why you're going to have kind of like a, it's going to sweep up, it's going to come to some sort of a peak at, you know, within a certain RPM for a couple hundred RPM, and then it will kind of drop off. Um, if your fuel map has kind of any like lumpy, bumpy stuff or anything like that, typically it's either caused by some other weird mechanical problem, fuel delivery, something like that that's wrong, and that needs to be fixed so that way your fuel table actually can look properly, or it was just you know, not dialed in properly to begin with. So um, just because this is like a smaller four cylinder and it's gonna make peak torque later, where like V8, for example, like you say you have like a big Q V8 or something where it's gonna make more lower end torque. So you basically say this would be a little bit more like yeah. raised faster, like a it, little bit. It could be. So like this also has variable cam timing and it also has VTEC. So like you'll see I have some break points here for where I'm expecting to do that. When the VTEC of like you know Honda style VTEC turns on, yeah. it's like an abrupt change in, in uh, the way that the camshaft behaves. So sometimes you'll have like a step that you have to put in there, but we're not gonna run the VTEC right now. I wanna actually just get a decent shape and we'll keep it at like whatever the spring pressure is, right? Um, and then after we get that shape, then we'll turn on the VTEC because we'll actually be able to see where the power falls off at what RPM range and where I need to adjust that to. Yeah. And then from there on, we'll run it with the VTEC on, plus the variable camming, uh, cam timing stuff I already have, like base settings in here. We'll see where it goes without the, the high cam or VTEC or whatever you want to call it turned on. Okay. And then um, I'll point it out to you, like on the, once we have a, a chart up here where like it showed how much power it made and everything, we'll be able to look and see at which engine RPM range that happened. Um, and we'll be able to offset when the VTEC turns on to be able to compensate where like the, the torque or the power falls over right there. Right? 
basically the reason they do that is to make it so that it has decent driving manners and it's not all like lumpy and choppy and stuff like that at low RPM. And then when you want to have higher RPM power, that was an early solution to um, variable cam timing. They didn't really have like normal, right. modern day variable cam yeah. timing when VTEC initially came out. Yeah, and I think it kind of <laughs> stayed kind of just like a hot thing. Yeah. I'm sure there's other benefits to it, but that was the general idea of having like a, a more racy camshaft for higher end power and then having like a stock or like a lower profile cam at low RPM so right. that you could have both. this many liters an hour or oh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but it's at like a pressure and if you start turning the pressure up and then the pressure has to go up one to one with boost it starts to yeah. the yeah. dive off really fast. Yeah. Okay. Now we're at now? Eight. 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 How high can we think it go? Stock you, they go eighty eight thousand eighty two hundred. Okay. Yeah. But I think, I think it I, I think it will go to nine if I want it to go that's what it I just don't know if it'll stay like that. I, I don't think I want to push it to <laughs> I don't want to push it to a bunch of power just time you don't I know I know you can make this assemble really quick. <laughs> yeah. Auto disassemble. Yeah. Auto disassemble in game. Wow. We, don't, <laughs> no, we no. don't need that. No, we I don't need that heartache. I don't need to no. drive home with that. Yeah, no, it ain't cool. We all know. I think eight's safe. Okay, eight's safe. I think eight is safe. I like it. Thank you. 